Welcome to the last lecture of Unit uh, 3 on uses of water. Um, we have just seen the uses of water, domestic use of water, urban use of water, and um, industrial use of water. And we have basically, in general, we just saw um, what are the simple uh, management measures that we can take, conservation measures that we can take, including the role of education, the water education that it has to uh, the uses like industrial use and urban water use. Now, let us uh, look at the impact of water supply system. So before going on with the lecture, I wanted to remind you that in the previous uh, lecture, I have also said that um, towards the end of the uh, unit three, you need to do a project work, basically choosing a community using water and spotting specifically a community that has scarcity of water and um, you are basically going to do research and find some solution and do a, a project work on the community on water use. So please look at the end of the slides that I've uh, shown how to do the project work, how to go on with the project work and also I'll be uh, leaving the same uh, guide or instruction in the VLE. So let's now get back to what is impact of water supply system. Basically, water supply system is is a system that uh, is a system that is comprised of uh, reservoirs like tank, pipeline system, and uh, including the output systems like uh, water tap and all. Uh, we are basically going to see. What exactly are the impacts that these have towards the environment, towards the, the climate, towards our resources? So let us just delve into this one. You just can see a tap right now. And uh, to get to this tap, there are lots of effort, there are lots of resources. And uh, people have put lots of pressure to get to this step and there are lots of system underlying system um, we have got source you have got a reservoir near the source from that reservoir uh, we have got filter and that filter is then after that filter then we have got um, uh, water piping system which goes all the way like few kilometers from the reservoir to the end point uh, where we are and uh, before again going, before again coming through the tap, uh, we have got again tank, which has to be placed on top of the building because if the tank is towards the bottom of the building, then the water will not come up to the top floors, and we need to again take that tank to the top floor. Then only from that tank, water is being uh, given to the different residents or different people who are residing in that building or that house or that community. So lots of work there in water supplying system. Uh, we can supply um, water through different ways. We have got surface water like streams, rivers, ponds, lakes, sp spring again, which actually are the main uh, water supply sources in our country. But in other countries, in most of the countries, again, one of the major sources of water is groundwater where they dig a well and they get their water from the aquifers. And these are two, surface water and the aquifer, two sources. Now the next one is, the uh, some of the countries, they even have to rely on the treated water through treatment plants. So these are the sources of water. And uh, through this uh, source of water, Water goes either through treatment plant. Um, some will have a treatment plant, but some will not have treatment plant. But if they have, then it should be going through treatment plant. Then this goes to the water storage tank. Like I said, it goes to the tank near the source. Uh, if it is a stream that is the source, then a reservoir or a tank near the stream is have to be has to be uh, constructed so that uh, for a temporary. Uh, Purpose that water is being stored there so that uh, even if the source gets dry, water is at least near the source with that reservoir. So, this is the reservoir of the tank that we need to build near the source. Then it goes to the main lines. 
where the households will basically have the tanks if it is a building the building will have basically have the tanks and some are based on the groundwater here some are just based on the water that's being reused or water that's being treated this is a spelling for treated sorry um, so basically three kinds of uh, sources now um, one is the surface water one is the ground water and another one is the water that's being treated but howsoever the if if this is a treated water sewage water which is being treated if this uh, dirty water which is being treated now this will act as a source if this is a uh, surface water this will act as a source if this is from ground water through a well this will act as a source so from there you either treat or you either do not treat or this is just to kill some bacteria or do some chlorination test and all so treat or not treat it's okay on you if your fresh water is very clean ready to drink do not treat then it goes to the system these everything the piping system the underground networks till where the point you have taps over here is what water supply system is all about so uh, source three kinds of source treatment plants water uh, reservoir then it goes to all the networks so this is what uh, water uh, supply system is all about uh, like I said oh I just forgot another thing one of the important source uh, not a major but important source is rainwater harvesting or sometimes also called as storm water harvesting so usually it happens from June to September that we have got a good uh, monsoon uh, rainfall where we can uh, uh, harvest this rainfall on the rooftop or on the bucket or on any kind of reservoir and that can also act as one of the potential source then we have got groundwater which can go to the uh, which can go to the main supply system through uh, treatment or without treatment if it's going through treatment then there are basic treatment uh, technologies like river osmosis can treat um, uh, membrane technologies can treat the filtration system can be treat uh, can treat those untreated water so groundwater can be treated or not treated but if groundwater is so much used and if it is polluted then it's a must that you need to treat the groundwater then we have surface water like uh, ponds lakes rivers streams and all that can be another put another important source i think the main source in our country and then it goes this everything goes to the distribution system and then uh, the distribution system if it is coming from if it is coming from uh, if it is coming from the uh, underground system like groundwater system then the distribution system will be combination of either gravity and pumping system so with the gravity you need to take up uh, uh, with the pumping system that with the pumping system you need to take the water from the groundwater to uh, the the top uh, reservoirs or the area where you want to use through pumping system and um, uh, uh, if the building is very tall uh, if you have got lots of floor and if it is something like building kind of structure that you're talking then you need to put the uh, tanks way up on top of the buildings and through the gravity through the combination of gravity uh, we can send the water to the individual households and uh, we have then reservoir over here or the storage tank then we have got pipeline system uh, these are the pipeline system that we have then we have got tanks at individual level then we have got pipes so these are the tanks that we have in individual level if you have seen you know hostels uh, uh, that uh, towards the rooftop there are so many tanks so the whole network uh, from the source till the tap is what uh, water supply system is all about but that has some impacts uh, because we're using metal because we're using uh, pumping machines because we are uh, de degenerating the existing water sources like groundwater system so what are the impacts there are many studies that uh, are being done to uh, look at the the impacts of the water supply system one of the study that i found uh, in one of the most reputed journal that's been that's elsevier uh, uh, 
uh, a group of people uh, led by uh, Vikrant uh, uh, Barker has done a study on the environmental impact that uh, can result from the water supply system like uh, the tanks, the underground, underground uh, reservoir extraction. Uh, so what are the uh, impacts of the supply system? So let us just look at from his study. So though his study is at particular location like this uh, Indian University campus, uh, Indian University campus in their area where they were actually trying to see whether the water supply system that they are currently having in their campus is actually impacting the environment, is actually impacting the resources or not. So let's just look at this impact and you can also generalize that the whatever finding that they have found can also be applied in general sense. So let's just see what they have got. Um, uh, yes, so uh, the overall comparison, so they've just taken two models. So one of the, uh, one model is, uh, they've taken two models, model one and model two. So the first model, model one, uh, simulates the current state of water supply system in, uh, in that area and uh, uh, Again, model one states that uh, the model is based on the low treatment efficiency of sewage treatment plants due to overload. So basically model one is uh, based on the, the, the current scenario where uh, water supply is through the groundwater system that they are currently using. And secondly, their treatment uh, uh, plan is not working or it's giving less efficiency and the model number two is basically uh, a model that assumes a reduction in the water consumption from almost 230 liters to 270 so uh, basically uh, by using a very uh, good technologies good uh, water supply systems and uh, yes definitely efficient uh, sewage water uh, treatment so uh, I hope you just got what we were uh, basically talking so model one is the current scenario and the model two is the scenario which uh, is because of the improved system which is because of uh, the good sewage treatment facilities that their uh, university or that their, their, their campus uh, will have so model one and model two so basically they compared that uh, without a very good water supply system, with following the current water supply system, they will be having around um, uh, around uh, this much impact on ecosystem quality, and uh, around 386.2 to human health, and around 183.4 to uh, the resource. So, without any good treatment efficiency and with the current scenario but if they improve the current scenario of water supply system and if they have an efficient sewage treatment plant which can treat water and that water can be reused then the scenario can be uh, scenario can be decreased in terms of uh, ecosystem quality from 154 to 141.76 it's a drastic decrease of around uh, 13 points uh, then the impact on human health from 386 to 349 about uh, 39 to 40 uh, units down and on the resources also around 20 units down from 183.42 so basically um, water supply systems have impact on our environment and even to our uh, health so it's very important that we need to have a good supply system. It's very important that we need to treat the sewage uh, water. So basically they found that um, from model one to model two, there are a difference of 10%, uh, 10% difference in uh, uh, resources, 11% difference in human health, meaning 11% better 
then model one uh, as compared to model two then model two again gives nine percent better uh, ecosystem quality um, in terms of climate change um, they really showed that uh, model one is comparatively effic effective or efficient in terms of climate change or in terms of reducing greenhouse gas so uh, model one with the current state and with a very less efficient sewage treatment system it's around like eight three two eight but with the good efficient sewage treatment system and very good water supply system it's just around like seven eight four or six a drastic decrease about uh, one thousand two hundred uh, units and um, if you just look at the fossil depletion for example uh, if you do not that university campus is not having uh, power supply due to the hydroelectricity but it's supplying uh, through the power generated from fossil depletion so uh, non efficient or um, uh, inefficient uh, water supply system in current state scenario gives around like 1781 units uh, or like uh, kg oil of uh, uh, kilogram of oil 1781 kilograms of oil of fossils but if you are using a very efficient ones if a water supply system is really good the impact is very less it's just around 1061 cases of fossil fuel if you look at the human toxicity toxicity then um, uh, it's very toxic if you are using the same uh, water supply system and scenarios but if it is less toxic if you are using the the kind of scenarios that we had in model number two. Again, looking at the terrestrial and ecological perspective, um, we have got a figures of two point one uh, units, and it has decreased to again one point uh, six uh, seven, so drastic decrease even in that one. If we look at the water depletion, water is being lost because of the current scenario, improper water supply system and um, uh, no proper sewage uh, treatment plans or inefficient sewage treatment uh, technology. But if you are having a very good sewage treatment technology and very good water supply system intact, no leakages, technologically uh, advanced um, uh, equipments like water faucets and all can actually decrease the water that's being lost from 2000 934 meter cube or uh, cubic meter to 2550 that's around like 400 cubic meter down let us now look at the global warming potential of uh, of water supply system and uh, a system which uh, basically has uh, basically has no other system to supply water like uh, a pipe like tank like tap and all so that's basically uh, using fresh water directly to irrigate uh, farm okay one two three now let us look at the global warming potential that's been contributed by the water supply system so uh, three areas are being compared by the city and you can also generalize this city generalize the idea that it's been given by this study so first one is the tap water tap water is the uh, the example that's being cited in the study that uses water supply system meaning uh, that requires source that requires a reservoir near the source that requires treatment plant that requires pipelines that requires um, again a reservoir or a tank near the building or towards the top top of the building and a water tap so that's something that really requires water supply system. Fresh water irrigation doesn't rely on a very systematic system. So meaning fresh water irrigation is basically using that fresh water that's available in river nearby directly to uh, be used for irrigation. So fresh water irrigation system doesn't have to have any kind of like uh, 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 very uh, huge technological things that have that needs in uh, tap water so at last we have got water that's being treated and that's being 
used for irrigation. So we, the author is basically comparing the uh, the global warming potential that the three kinds of uh, system is going to give. So what is the potential that it can warm the earth? What is the potential that it can increase the climate or increase the temperature around the world? So um, if you look at the disposal, so the kind of water uh, uh, that uh, uh, comes out of the tap and the kind of water that uh, comes as an end user of the freshwater irrigation and the kind of water that is coming as an end user of treated water irrigation has marked difference. So the global warming potential in disposal is around like 35.86% in case of tap water, meaning um, because of disposal, uh, because of just disposal, because of just the uh, wastage that the tap water supply system is going to give, it's going to uh, contribute to around 35.86% of the global warming. And uh, whereas freshwater, freshwater irrigation is not going to contribute because uh, what happens is that whatever water is being disposed, whatever water is being uh, wasted, or whatever water is being used as an end product is basically going to the irrigation or uh, basically going to the farm or the field so it's again going to be used by plants or if it's not getting used by plants it will be going to uh, going to the groundwater system inside the aquifers and it's not going to get wasted so zero percent waste and zero percent still waste in the treated water irrigation because treated water itself gives us a zero global warming potential on the other hand the irrigation itself uh, uh, gives the less or zero wastage of water. And overall, um, if you look at the impact that is being um, given by the model one and model two, looking at the three kinds of uh, three kinds of system, one is tap water system, another one is fresh water to irrigation, another one is um, treated water uh, irrigation. So the global warming impact that uh, um, uh, these three systems can give is in model uh, one uh, uh, 77 percent of the impact is being contributed by the tip water whereas uh, in model number two 79 is being again contributed by the uh, tip water because it really needs lots of water supply systems and all and uh, only 0 0.2 is being contributed by, or like 22% is being contributed by freshwater irrigation system, and only 0 0.01 or 1% is being contributed by. Overall, what we can see is that 77% of the impact to global warming is being contributed by the water supply system, especially uh, if you look at water supply system that supplies from source to the tap. So that's giving around 77% uh, to the overall global warming. So the conclusion is that water supply system impacts the uh, impacts the environment, impacts the human resources, impacts the uh, resources that we have. The conclusion is that water supply system impacts the environment and resources and even to human health and the impact if you just look at from the from the point of global warming potential 77 percent of the uh, global warming potential is being contributed by the tap water system so that that tap water system is the main water supply system that we have mostly in common around the world so what are the Water conservation practices that uh, we can do in order to uh, lessen the impact of water supply system, in order to uh, lessen the impact that we have from domestic water use, um, urban water use and industrial water use. There are two ways to look at the conservation measures or conservation practices. One is through looking at from the point of uh, engineering practices where mostly it deals with hardware uh, fixing 
plumbing and uh, other changes and uh, uh, the other one is behavioral practices which uh, mainly deals with the habits that we use water so at the residential level what we can do is that we can have plumbing changes as an engineering practice we can have low flush toilets so there are different kinds of toilets uh, we have high flush low flush we have got both kinds of uh, both kinds of uh, 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 flushes uh, at the same uh, bathroom so one is half flush and one is the full flush so that kind of low flush uh, technology toilets can be installed toilet tanks volume displacement uh, device um, uh, low flow uh, shower heads yes those shower heads which gives low amount of water faucets aerator um, then uh, we have got pressure reduction devices uh, we have got um, gray water reuse landscaping um, this is where uh, the gray water that's being used from the common kitchen from the laundry uh, water can actually be used for our landscaping purposes or can actually be used for um, irrigating the lawn outside us uh, then we have got a uh, plantation of drought tolerant plants most of the time what we do is we uh, we use ornamental plants or we plant those flowers of uh, aesthetically uh, uh, important plants which are not drought tolerant they really require uh, water at its step from the settling to the mature uh, maturity we do not want that kind of plants we want drought tolerant plants so that even if we do not have much water to consume for ourselves, for to use for ourselves, we can still manage to grow that plant. Uh, then we do some xeriscape landscape, meaning uh, we bring uh, plants which are growing only in like which can grow in uh, even in deserted areas, xeriscapes landscape. Then we can in the uh, agricultural uh, areas we can also have. Uh, irrigation which needs less amount of water meaning irrigation which can uh, uh, be sustained uh, through less uh, amount of water like we can have technologies like drip irrigation instead of, of flood irrigation then low volume irrigation technology like drip irrigation over flood irrigation then wastewater reuse and recycling soil management water reuse and recycling and please look at all this engineering practice uh, through the slides is very clear from the slide itself from the words itself please read if you do not know uh, ask me if you again uh, do not uh, want to ask me you can go through the internet and you can search for these keywords they will just uh, uh, there will be lots of answers to these words and behavioral practices is mainly to changing the water use habit that uh, we are having so we can have pricing so water can be sold for example uh, we can install water meter so installing a water meter can be uh, can lead to the conscious use of water public information and ed uh, education can lead to change in uh, use of habits or habits of using water then we have got uh, drought uh, management practices to be uh, carried out then we have got irrigation scheduling, meaning uh, we do not want to irrigate water uh, unknowingly in agricultural field, but we want to uh, irrigate water looking at the best and perfect schedules so that we do not waste water. Then monitor water uh, use. Um, irrigation program on water can be done from the industrial and uh, commercial uh, groups. So that's all on uh, units three um especially this slide i'm not explaining because it takes lots of time but you can also uh, read by yourself if you do not know like i said ask me ask your friends or you can even type these keywords to internet um lastly like i said you need to do a project work selecting a community whereby those communities should be at least uh, facing some uh, scarcity of water or problems related to water or having some issues with water so uh, select that community and do some kind of project work in that community by reading this uh, guidelines so uh, please do that project work and 
this project book is very important because it has the full mark of um, uh, twenty uh, percent from your overall uh, semester assessment. Um, what are the different ways in which water is being used? If you can quantify, meaning if you can use, if you can say that that much person is being used for domestic purpose, that much person is being used for if they have some kind of commercial activities going on and industrial purpose. That's that much water is being used for agriculture. You can basically try to quantify if you want, if you can quantify, which will uh, fetch uh, extra points. Then uh, what are the challenges that they face? What are the recommendations? What, what are the issues that they, uh, uh, they have and they uh, tackle with? So please do the assignment. Um, documentation is mandatory, meaning uh, we I need uh, a proof where you have carried out uh, the the project work uh, properly or not. So you may include audio record or video clips or uh, pictures of the interview or pictures of the project that you have laid out in that in that community. So uh, really, in really, uh, this assignment instructions and guidelines are being uploaded. Please watch or please see the. Um, uh, VLE and uh, submit the assignments on VLE. So that's it on water users. We have seen uh, what are the different kinds of water users. We have basically seen domestic water use, industrial water use, and urban water use. And we have also seen some of the measures and techniques that we can do in order to reduce the loss and increase the efficiency. We have also seen what are the impacts of the water supply system. That's the system that is being supplied to uh, have water to uh, domestic purpose, uh, to have water in urban uh, areas, to have water in industrial areas. So, but these systems will definitely have some impact. And what are the impacts that the systems have? We have already we have seen these impacts. I hope uh, you are clear with uh, the unit three on uses of water. And please do the project work on community water uses very seriously and uh, 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 let me know if you have any uh, queries let me know through really um, discussion forum thank you so much